I do have a pitter patter shirt, but I felt that would be a little too on the nose. But yeah, that's probably the thing that I say I the most. Patter. Nice. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. Uh, this is for both of you, but Nathan, I'd like to start with you. What is the line that fans quote at you the most? Uh, pro- okay, so there's a couple of them, but probably one of them would certainly have to be um, Go Home, Daryl is a big one. Hey, Katie. Go Home, Daryl. Another, you know, another one would just be like, honestly, just pitter patter. A lot of people like that one because they want like a holler back response from that one. And so they feel like they can get it. And I don't mind. I'll holler back. Uh, let's get at her. Absolutely. So I love those ones. Those ones are great. As far as like the internet and stuff, it's a lot of like who who brought the rock or like that's what I appreciate about you or your snipey or who brought the rocket boys. But it's not really at that point it's like not really for me. It's just for other people to see the comment and then they all have like a conversation and it's like it's a it's kind of like a line exchange and it's pretty funny to watch. <laughs> fucking look at this snipe. Fucking love this snipe. You'll snipe Sally boys. Dirty fucking dangles boys. You're a sniper. You're a snipe. Uh, uh, people yell at me to give my balls a tug, then call me a tit fucker often, which is an interesting thing to hear from a from a 12 year old's mouth. Fuck you, Shorzy. Fuck you, Riley. Fight me. See what happens. Uh, I get furda all the time. Yeah, mo- mo- mostly furda, I'd say, is the most common and easy one to spit out in passing. Must be nice, furda. Furda. <laughs> is shouted at me when when it's a normal day uh, and it's not pandemic and I'm walking down the street without a mask on and people are just driving by. I think I get that yelled at me and said to me and people sneaking up behind me and saying that like uh, multiple times a day, I'd say. Multiple, Mm -hmm. multiple times. It's uh, it's something. I get Stuart a lot too. I get Stuart. Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. Oh, that's really a big one for me as well. I don't really get the same sort of um, public uh, notoriety as, as Evan or Dylan or Michelle. Or that's me. a good thing, Tyler. If people recognized you out of the wig, I think you'd be in like, you'd be in trouble. How flattering. Uh, Eyes appreciates that about you, or that's what Eyes appreciates. Uh, that comes up a lot. Is that what you appreciate about me? And uh, butt stuff. Let's go easy over there, Squirrely Dan. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at you, ground. The butt stuff has has plagued me. In fact, I I several times asked the internet to stop uh, making comments about the butt stuff when I post about me and my fiance. Uh, Understandable. Um, there are just I understand it's funny on the show, but we we've got to remember that in real life you don't talk about butt stuff with uh, the general public. <laughs> that is for your closest friends during a game of catch and your most intimate partner. You don't ask about butt stuff on the interwebs. You ever have a gal suggest that you need some attentions paid to your butts holes? Can you talk about where adding the S came from? Was that more natural to your speech or is that something you have to like practice to hit the dialogue right? It's funny, we actually have discussions before some scenes about what words I should add S's to. Like I've sat down with Nate and Jacob and Jared and been like, is it funnier if I say all the S's here? Or is it funnier if I save up the plural to the very end of the whole sentence? And Dan was sort of the the third hick added. I was, uh, you know, uh, Nate and Jared had already established their characters in the uh, uh, YouTube shorts originally. So when I joined up, I wanted Dan to do something different that the other two characters uh, didn't necessarily do that was indicative of sort of small towns and being a touring stand-up, I'd spent a lot of years playing small towns, and my buddy and I, uh, Ryan Denis, toured together a lot, and we'd, we'd go to these towns and we'd have guys come up to us after the show, and this was how they talked. You know, that's uses a pretty funny stand-up comedians, and it's like, great, I don't know where that came from. Overall, not so bad. Thank you, Miss Katie's. I appreciate your assessment. Uh, we've seen Katie date a lot of different characters on the show. Is there anyone that you thought was actually a good fit? Ooh, good question. Um, yeah, like weirdly, I thought uh, Stuart was a nice fit only because they'd been friends in, I mean, they're all, they've all known each other forever, but they had this kind of like lovely history where she was fond of him and sort of saw him and in his goodness. Um, obviously, the you know, he, he took a turn and that wouldn't have worked, that doesn't work for Katie at this point. But I thought that was uh, a nice fit. I think Katie's a pretty 
easy breezy person as far as who she dates, but uh, I don't know if she's dated her soulmate yet. So we've gotten to see Stuart pursue a few romantic relationships in the past, most specifically like mm -hmm. Katie and Gay. Do you mm -hmm. think we'll ever explore like Roll's romantic side or does he only have eyes for Stuart? Cody, did you not well, see the Valentine's Day episode? <laughs> I'm just gonna say what you're all thinking. Roll gets spit roasted by Dax and Ron. Okay, I do remember I don't know the if I would call dating. that romantic. <laughs> But yes, mm. there is definitely a sexual element there. Um, I think of that course. To, to, to have rolled in a romantic setting would be an interesting development for Stuart especially. I think if Roald's attention was separated, I think Stuart would be deeply upset. And, you know, maybe an idea. <laughs> maybe an idea for the show. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't, you don't, I, of course you don't. Speaking specifically about you all in real life and not necessarily your characters, who do you think really is the toughest person in Letterkenny? Would it surprise any of us? I'm gonna still yeah. pick, I, I'm gonna pick Jared. Jared will be the yeah, toughest Jared, guy in Letterkenny. Yeah. Yeah. Jared and, and and Andrew, I think so. Jared, for sure, that's that's true, um, no question. But then Andrew's like a sneaky mm -hmm. addition to that because is he's he's so sweet he's so he's so calm he's all of those things but he does like if push comes to shove he can mm. show up you know um uh danny oh, petronidic who plays uh, mcmurray is also tough as nails True. absolutely tough as nails yes yeah. <laughs> oscar fano <laughs> <laughs> okay got an entire <laughs> season of winona earth while pregnant that, that is one badass lady i mean i think it's dio like, who am I most afraid oh, yeah. of? Dio Horn. Jay and Joint Boy. Yeah. Right. Probably Jay yeah. and Joint Boy. Yeah. That's a, definitely Jay and Joint Boy. Yeah. Because in, in, in real life, they're both accomplished. Uh, one's a Muay Thai champion. Jay, Jay fought for Team Canada. I believe he won a gold medal, actually. And, uh, and um, Joint Boy was a boxer. And he yeah. was like the Golden Gloves runner up. So he yeah. was pretty good as well. Fights, I would say, are basically essential to the show at this point. Uh, why didn't we get to see that fight with Dirks? And do you think we should have seen it? Or was there a better reason for us to not? I mean, it's funny because a lot of people were like, I'm so excited for the new season because we finally get to see everybody kick the shit out of Dirks. And I totally understand wanting to see that. I think filming a scene where it's a group of people beating up one person is maybe not on brand for Letterkenny because it's it's one thing to imagine what that is, it's another to see that. Maybe it's a little bit too dark or like bullyish or something. That was kind of what I was thinking, but um, I get people wanting to see it <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. I, I think it's better, um, uh, you, yeah, like Michelle saying, I, I get that people want to see that and that they want to be shown what happened exactly, but I think it's kind of better if it's left up to the imagination as to what we did as a group to him for being such a dirtbag. Um, so I think that kind of where the, uh, uh, the myth is stronger than the truth or whatever the hell you want to call it, but I think not showing it gives people their imagination and they can run wild. What did they do? What did they not do? Did they just pull down his pants and give him a spanking or did they actually beat the shit up? You know, who knows? But the but the point is you get to draw your own conclusions. You know something happened and that's sort of that's sort of I think where it was best left is not exactly doing it. A little too on the nose if you show everything and then uh, this one, a little bit of mystique, no big deal. Yeah. I mean, we do a lot of fights, so sometimes by not showing a fight, you've showed a great fight. You know, like we we want to we want to surprise you. We can't just give you endless fights. And I think also in keeping with the spirit of the show, uh, where there's not a lot of there's no bullying and bullying isn't rewarded. I didn't really want to watch twelve people beat up one guy. Plus, I mean, the season it starts without that specific fight, but then you get another pretty epic brawl. We finally saw Stewart's uh, force powers work on someone outside of the group. Is he a Jedi? How, how do these powers work? Is this in the Star Wars universe? I mean, look, you don't know what's coming next season, so I don't want to. <laughs> there might be a crossover episode. Uh, yeah, we but... get Baby Yoda in, which is tight. So. Yeah, he's Baby Yoda, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm a young Darth Lord. Dark Lord? <laughs> um, sure. We just have fun, honestly, <laughs> and we don't know what's going on half the time. So uh, there's no reasoning behind it other than, yes, I am a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to make an argument against that for two seconds. I remember on the day when I'm choking the guy out and you're yes. doing the force pressure, 
Tierney was like, I think we need to make it unclear. Like that was part of the discussion was like, like you choke him harder, but you also choke him harder. I don't really want to know the answer here. Like, so I think that's what the plan was. The character has kind of uh, given up trying to understand what we're doing a long time. Yeah. Ago.